بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers and sisters, many people when they go through hardship and difficulty in life, they begin to ask a question: Why am I living? What am I living for? The idea is the struggles make them think that there is no point to live without realizing that what is the point of dying? I mean, why should I die? That's another question. If you are asking, why should I live? I want to ask you, well, why should you die? You might say, it will solve my problems. And if I tell you it will actually create a bigger problem, what would you say? And this is why more and more people, because of the challenges that we face on earth today, begin to ask a question, why am I living without realizing you would only know the true answer of why you are living if you were prepared to go and study or to learn or to ask people why exactly were we brought onto earth in the first place. <laughs> Allah says, I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. So what is worship of Allah? Worship of Allah primarily is to understand who he is and what he wants from you. He is your maker and he's only made you on earth for a very short time between 60 and 70 years on average. Most people go in that age. Those who've lived a little bit longer are fortunate. They've seen a little bit more of the world. But do you understand point number one, the temporary nature of this existence on this particular earth? That does not mean you are going to come to an end, but rather the body you are in right now will come to an end. And then your soul goes into a different life altogether where it will not have the same body, but Allah will grant it whatever he wishes. Once you understand the temporary nature of this earth, you will begin to realize that whether I like it or not, I have to die. But I cannot take my own life because the one who gave me life in the first place put me here for a purpose. And he says that purpose is to worship me. And how do I worship him? Number one, like I said, by understanding him. Well, we've mentioned only one point and that is he's your creator. He's the one who's going to decide. He decided what your race is going to be, who your parents are going to be, where you're going to come from, what part of the earth you're going to be born in. He's the one who decided your level in terms of society, your family, where you're going to come. Some people are born in the house of a king and others are born while they are refugees. May Allah Almighty bless all of them. Whether you're born in the house of a king or whether you're a refugee from the point of birth does not actually determine where you're going to go the minute you leave this world. In fact, those who've led a life filled with struggles stand a better chance to go to a better place when it comes to the hereafter. If only they engage in something known as surrendering to the decree of Allah, bearing patience and being happy with what Allah has given you. Today, I invite you to look at your life and tell yourself and keep telling yourself, I am happy with my maker. I am happy and satisfied to have Allah as my Lord. I'm happy. I'm happy how Allah made me, where he made me, what he's given me, how he's kept me. I'm happy. If you can surrender to that, you've solved three quarters, if not more of the problem. I am happy. I'm satisfied. I'm pleased that Allah is my Lord. He made me. And what does he want from me? He says, where I put you, I want you to just say, Wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allahi ta'ala. Good and bad fate is from Allah. If Allah put something for you and did not put it for him, Alhamdulillah. If Allah put it for him and not for you, Alhamdulillah. Allah put you up and down in terms of worldly life, Alhamdulillah. Use what you have, how you have it, when you have it, in order to earn the eternal life. Because no matter how many struggles you have on this earth or no matter how much luxury you have on this earth, it will come to an end the day your eyes close. Only if you allow Allah Almighty to decide when your life is going to be taken without your interference, 
What I mean by this is obviously those who commit suicide, and you know it's prohibited in Islam, and I'll talk about it for a minute just now, but you know it's prohibited in Islam. It's not like they decided that I'm going to take my life now without Allah being in the equation somehow, but rather they used their capacity given by Allah in the wrong way with the knowledge of Allah. That's what it is. Allah is in control of everything, but Allah allows you to turn left or right at times, although he knows where you're going to go, but he gave you something known as a choice. If I were to tell you, please, can you stand up? Don't you feel like you have a choice to just remain seated? Who is this guy telling me to stand up? You have a choice. But if you want to stand up, please say Bismillah in the name of Allah and then attempt to stand up because if Allah wants, he can block you. He can block you. You think you have a choice, but if Allah wants, he'll tell you, hang on, you actually don't have a choice. I'm going to show you. You want to do something that I don't want to allow you to do. But in a lot of things, we as human beings, we realize that this choice that Allah has given us, He lets us follow it through in order to either reward us or punish us. So He gives you the capacity, He gives you the brain, He gives you the ability. When you're young, you can barely speak. You cannot speak, in fact, when you were born. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. When Allah took you out of the wombs of your mothers, you didn't know anything. Then what happened? Someone around you taught you. What language do you speak? They call it a mother tongue. Why? Because someone around you, perhaps your mother or your father or those around you, they are the ones who taught you what to say and they taught you how to speak. The accent also came through. And what did Allah do? Allah gave you the capacity. It was developed and Allah gave them the ability to develop. That's why my beloved parents, Allah will ask you, what did you do to develop your children in the right direction? Were you busy doing your own thing to the degree that you didn't even spend time with your kids? Or did you teach them the deen? Did you give them good names? Did you teach them who I was? Did you teach them their responsibilities? Did you develop good habits so that your children develop good habits so that when you died, you have a sadaqa jariya in the form of children who were doing good after you left and you got an automatic reward for it? Or did you waste your time on earth having fun and forgetting what the main purpose was in a way that when you died, there was nothing there for you? You know, when Allah speaks about the kuffar in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are some people from among them who are good. They did nice things on earth, but they didn't believe. They really, they were honest and upright. Don't you know some people who don't believe in Allah? Honest, upright, kind, really amazing people. They are fair and just and so on. All the deeds that they did, we gave them the reward of it earlier on, perhaps on earth. Allah says, we gave you. What did we give you? Your life was filled with joy, happiness, sweetness, beauty. You enjoyed the holidays. You went out to Hawaii and Honolulu and Maldives and wherever else it was. And you had so much of fun because we wanted you to enjoy the reward of the good that you did. But in the hereafter, everything became like ash because it's coupons that are spent a believer you get coupons for every time you bear patience in order to do something allah has asked you to do such as getting up for salatul fajr or every time you abstain from something allah asked you to abstain from such as protecting yourself from pornography from drugs from adultery from intoxicants you get coupons what are these coupons rewards what is it known as sabr there's a third type of sabr. I said two things. Number one is to be able to do that which Allah instructed you. Number two is to be able to abstain from that which he told you not to do. And number three is to be happy at the decree of Allah that you had no say in. Suddenly the roof came down. Five people in my family died. It's a big one. It's a tough one. I'm going to cry. I'm going to miss them. It's going to affect me. But if by the help of Allah, I will keep going. And what do I say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We all belong to Allah and ultimately, I'm also going to go back. We're all going to go back to him. That's the statement of a believer when some calamity strikes. So what happened there? You earn coupons. Coupons because you were patient. Coupons because you forced yourself to get up for salah. Coupons because you blocked yourself from doing haram. May Allah protect myself and yourselves from haram. And what happens to those coupons? You're not going to get them back on earth because you're a believer. 
your earth, or while you're on earth, Allah will keep on throwing opportunities at you in order to grow. Amazing. When you have a business, what happens? You want to grow. Can you grow just by sitting at home, relaxing and sleeping? Get up in the morning to do what? Go and earn. You open one business, it's doing very well. You start employing people, you have challenges, more challenges, but you still want another branch and another branch. And now you've got 40 branches and mashallah, you're making millions and so many millions and you're still not satisfied and quenched and you're happy and there's challenges and so much of jealousy against you. Your own sometimes family members turn against you and so much more. And what are you doing? Getting more and more. Do you have any intention to stop? The answer is no. I'm only going to stop when Allah stops me. That's when my eyes close. Agreed? Well, if you want the eternal bliss, because in life, if I've got 100 million, I can perhaps buy a beautiful home, have a nice car, have a yacht, mashallah, enjoy my holidays, send my kids to the best of schools, have the best perfumes and the best clothes and the best accessories and everything else, and be able to, you know, be as, enjoy everything. But without realizing that's temporary, didn't we say earlier, it has to come to an end. Have you done something for the next one? The next life which is eternal. It's far more important. So Allah says, all you got to do is collect the coupons. When you're collecting coupons, we're going to send you more opportunities to bear sabr. Something, some calamity comes. You lost your entire business because of a strike, because of violence, because of a fire, because of some problem, because of corruption, whatever it may be. Take it in your stride and learn to say, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, if you are pleased with me, I don't mind what has happened. That's the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ, Nabi of Allah, best of creation, most noble of all prophets, a flawless person, completely perfect. Subhanallah, he goes to Ta'if. You know what they did to him? He had the ability to crush them. And he says, oh Allah, if you are pleased with me, it's okay. Everything else is by the way. Imagine. What do you have today? Imagine you lost your job and you were basing your growth on the salary you were going to get from that job and suddenly you lost it because of some mishap that happened at your own workplace. You become depressed. It's not worth it. You went through a divorce. You are depressed. It's not worth it. Allah says, Inna ma al -usri yusran. Inna ma al -usri yusran. With every difficulty, there will be two points of ease. Two, what are the two points of ease? People have spoken about it. Muhaddithin, Mufassirin, Ulama. They've spoken about the points of ease with hardship. With hardship, what is the ease? It draws you closer to Allah. It has to. If you're a believer, and you're not close to Allah because Allah kept you in a luxury home. He might take it away from you. Or he might send in your life as luxury as it may be an element of fear. What is the reason of the fear? Not so that you become arrogant. I'm going to fix the guys. I'm going to show the guys. Allah says, we want to fix you, man. Come. Come for salah. Be humble. Reach out to the people. You're a little bit too... Forgetful of us at the moment. We want to tap you. Come. That's why we brought in fear. Allah says, we will test all of you, O believers, with elements of what? Allah says, we will test you with hunger and fear, anxiety. What's going to happen tomorrow? Allah says, leave it to me. Bashir is sabirin. Give good news to those who bear patience. When you are patient, it gives you meaning to live because you're collecting more and more coupons. If you want to take your life away now, how many coupons do you have? Nothing. Zero. And if you take your life away, the coupons you might have had are all depleted because you did something that was prohibited in the eyes of Allah. I said I'm going to speak about suicide for a moment because when people commit suicide, they're one of two cases. Either they're doing it knowingly. I know what I'm doing and this is what I'm doing. In that case, you have a major, major, major sin that you've perpetrated that you have to answer to Allah for and that is extremely dangerous. But sometimes you have a person whose mind is not well. They're going through stress and depression and anxiety and various other mental trauma. And it comes to a point where they think to themselves, there's no point to live. And no one talks to them. In fact, their families make it difficult for them. And perhaps the parents say words that make this child even worse. And they feel, well, my parents are not there for me. My brothers and sisters are not there for me. The community is not there for me. No one is there for me. And they, because they don't know what they're doing and they have a level of madness and they did that, you need to remember one thing. Although it is wrong what they did, their judgment is with Allah. You and I cannot say they are going to hell because when a person is not in the right frame of mind, the angels do not write their deeds. Rufi al qalamu an thalatin. The pen has been lifted from three types of people. One, the one who is asleep, the one who is unconscious, and the one who is mentally unwell. 
you don't know what you're doing and you did something, Allah says, we won't hold it against you. So who knows, perhaps that particular suicide was not even written against them only because they had a mental condition and they had no idea what they were doing. That's the reason why I say, go easy on the families of those who might have committed suicide. Some people say, I'm not even going to visit. I'm not even going to make dua. I'm not even going to do this. I'm not even going to... Who are you? Who are you? You probably need the dua more than that, that guy does. We are not condoning what he did. We are not saying what he did is right. But what we are saying is the man had a mental problem or the guy had a mental problem. Even the angels probably did not write what he did at the end because as the hadith said clearly, the pen is lifted from these type of people. And here you are out of your arrogance saying, I'm not even going to make dua for him or her. Why? Chances are nine times out of 10 of the cases of people who commit that suicide, this is the case with them. So I'm here today to tell you, it's not worth doing that. I tell you, two years from now, and many of us will bear witness, you will be in a place and a position where you'll actually laugh and say, you know, one day I was actually considering taking my life away. Look what Allah's blessed me with. How many of us have been through tough times? I mean, Corona just passed and prior to that and immediately after that and during that, how many people lost hope? Many. And what happened? It's a talk. It's someone's encouragement. It's your brother, your father, your community member, your friend, someone who told you a good word to tap you on. That's why my brothers and sisters, go easy on those who are struggling. Say a good word, Allah will bless you. Say a good word to people who are suffering. Don't worry, my brother, everything will be fine. I don't have a clue whether things are going to be fine or not. But what do I do? I have to say, my brother, it's going to be fine. Based on Allah's promise. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. With hardship comes ease. And with hardships comes more ease. I believe that it's going to come. So I want to tell everyone here who is struggling. Don't worry. Allah will bless you. Allah will look after you. Remember one year from now, two years from now, you will be in such a beautiful position. The condition, bear patience. Thank Allah. Look at the goodness he's given you. Work hard. Don't become despondent. Don't just sit and sleep. This morning, asked, someone asked me, what's your hobby? And I said, you really want to know? Sleeping. Are you crazy? I said, because I don't get to sleep. That's the reason. I hardly get to sleep. So when I get to sleep, I say, guys, don't disturb me. I'm off. I don't want anyone to talk. I don't want the sound. Sleep, subhanallah. But that's sleep to a time. You have to get up and go and do your things. If you are sad because you're going through a hardship and you still want to enjoy that hobby of yours, of sleeping, then you're not going to go anywhere. You have to get up, work hard, have hope. You, are, you lost a job, apply for another and another. Someone told me, I applied for 20 jobs, I haven't got one. I said, apply for 200 jobs, not 20. Go from the morning to the evening, every day, office to office, place to place. Ask for a job, a job, a job. You will get it. But because we are lazy, we suffer the consequences. We suffer the consequences. And then when Allah has chosen for you, say for example, you went through a divorce, you were sad, you were very upset because you know what? You didn't want to. You lost your family, you lost some... Take it in your stride. You're not the first person. You won't be the last person. You have to keep going. And what are you going to do? I'm trying again. And then what? Inshallah, it will work. And then what else? I'm going to try a third time. And then what? Inshallah, it will work. I see guys I know here who've been through this type of a thing where they lost total hope. Today, they're sitting happy. They are so excited because they didn't believe Allah would open the doors. Don't you know? For Allah, it's just a little kun. Fayakunu. It's just a little b, and it is. Imagine you lost your job, right? You had a nice job, a well-paid job, and you struggled for two, three, four years. Is it not a flash for Allah? One day someone calls you, say, listen, I offer you a job. How much are you going to pay me? I pay you 100,000. Hey, I used to get 10,000. Look, here's 100, man. Allah says, didn't we tell you? And by the way, don't come to me for that job because I don't have it. But inshallah, you're going to get it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I'm trying to tell you is no matter what, you cannot make a profit every day. You cannot be happy every single day. A day has to come. Allah tests you with minus. You go for a mathematics test. Do you ever find that the math teacher tests you plus and multiplication and addition, multiplication and addition? No, they have to test you division and subtraction also that then you know mathematics. You're a believer, you cannot have plus, plus, plus. I'm a believer, why is Allah upset with me? No, Allah gave you a chance to collect your coupons. Those who are struggling the most, if they are steadfast, Allah says we will collect for them so much of a reward. Do you want to hear the, the verse of the Quran? Inna ma 
Allah says, those who bear patience upon what we have chosen for them, we will recompense them with the reward unlimited, no account. How much do you want? Imagine a person comes to you with a blank check and tells you, write the figure. You're confused because you don't know what he has. If this guy has 20 billion, I'll write 19.9, <laughs> right? I'm just giving an example. I don't know what he has. When Allah tells you my ownership is unlimited, Allah says, listen to this powerful narration. If from the beginning of creation of man right up to the end, every single human being was to ask me every single thing that they ever wanted and I were to give everyone from the beginning to the end, every single thing they ever wanted, it would not displace from my kingdom except that which is displaced from the ocean when a pin is put into it and taken out. That's the kingdom of Allah. That's the kingdom of my Lord. Subhanallah. What does Allah not have? He has everything. He owns everything. He tells you, you know, you have an ocean. You put a pin in and take out the pin. How much water was displaced? Allah says, if I gave the first of you and the last of you, every single thing you ever wanted, it would not displace from my kingdom even that much. The ownership of Allah. When I was a little bit younger, I used to wonder. As we're growing older and we're becoming much older, Allah has allowed us to see a little bit of technology. The James Webb telescope that I've spoken about so many times is actually one of the favors of Allah upon us to see what he has. Go and Google it. James Webb telescope. Check what's going on. Do you know they launched a telescope and it's just going. It's going millions of kilometers every day, sending back images to the earth. Do you know? They have discovered planets and galaxies in the millions and the billions like sand scattered on the beach throughout space and beyond what they never imagined existed. It's going on and on and on and there's no stop to it. I'm talking of now human discovery today. Imagine. And you know the earth is one of the smallest planets in existence. Did you know that? Subhanallah, and here's man, each one of us thinks I'm a big deal. I'm going to fix that guy. Man, what are you to fix people and things? And that's why I love the verse of Surah Yasin. We read it all the time. It's a reminder to me. When I get up and I want to argue, you know, people, we are human beings. People tell you something nasty about yourself and you want to get up and you want to do something about it. And then you remember the verse of Allah. Allah says, you know what, man? We made you from a droplet, a small, insignificant droplet. Now you're big, you want to argue. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطْفَةِ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُّبِينٌ Does man not see we created him from a droplet of semen? Now suddenly he wants to argue and come forward and debate us. How can you argue with Allah? Who is Allah? Who are you? You came to this earth. Where were you? Where were you? May Allah forgive us. How old are you? Say for example, I'm 50. Where was I 55 years ago? Allah says in Surah Al-Dahr, and amazingly, that Surah is talking about time. Allah says, does man know? Did, did a time not pass man when he was not even something to be mentioned? Not even something to be mentioned. He weren't even in existence. No one knew you would exist. And today, you don't know your own grandfather's grandfather. You don't know him whatsoever. You don't even know him. So your grandchild's grandchild, you will not be in his equation. And how big do I think I am today? I'm a big deal. And so are you. Big deal. Why? Hey, we're sitting with so much of this and so much of that. And so I tell you, man, the idea here, live your life. Live your life based on what Allah has chosen for you. Yes, work hard to achieve the dunya as well. I'm not saying it's bad to have good things in life. No, it's good. On condition that your main focus is what? paradise my main focus is paradise and I love the question where someone says if for example Allah had to tell you listen for you is paradise on condition that your biggest enemy on earth is going to be your neighbor what will you say there's only one answer what's the answer there's only one answer please tell me what's the answer it's okay I go 
For as long as I got paradise, I don't care who else got that paradise. I mean, it's, it's fine. Um, and I also know that in Jannah, there will be no more hatred, animosity and enmity in the heart. So even if I see this guy who was my biggest enemy on earth, hey, for as long as I got it, it's fine. Imagine you asking, oh Allah, give me a billion, give me a billion, give me a billion. Allah says, no problem, we give you two billion. But that guy, we give him four. Are you going to say, oh Allah, I want eight? You got your two, it's okay, it's fine. Forget what they get. And that's why on earth, let me tell you one other quick thing. You can never spend more than what Allah has written for you to spend. That's why people say, I need a hundred million. And I say to them, in your life, you're only going to use 10 million. What do you want to do with the other 90? Do you want your children to kill each other because you left so much? You know what? Just say, oh Allah, give me that which is sufficient. Give me extra so that I can do charity and earn more coupons to get a higher abode in paradise. And help me so that when I leave, my children can be a sadaqa jariya for me and not a war amongst each other. Wallahi, that's a good dua. That's a good dua. Help me so that I can do charity. And that's why if you look at Surah Al-Layl and so many other surahs, Allah says in there that those who are in Jannah are the ones whom Allah has allowed to use their money in a good cause. You got the money, spend it. You got the money, spend it. It's hard. Allah tells you spend. You want more give more you get more you don't give because your number is written nobody's actions are going to take away your sustenance not at all trust Allah give it's okay because Allah's written for them through your kitty and Allah will have to fill your kitty to give them more fill your kitty to give them more because you didn't spend it on yourself it's amazing how it works the hadith says Anfiq ya Adam unfiq alayk. O son of Adam spend I will spend on you what do we do we don't even spend May Allah Almighty make it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, I end the same way I started to say. If you think for a moment, if you are thinking for a moment that what do I have to live for, I tell you what you have to live for is to collect as many coupons. The more difficult your scenario is right now, the more coupons you can actually collect so that you will enter the highest ranks of paradise. The day Allah decides to take you, you go with a smile. You might have lived a life of a vagabond, a life of a person who struggled, a life of a person who really had tough days. Smile. You are breathing. You have a little bit of food here and there. You have some clothing. You might be sleeping under the bridge somewhere. May Allah help you. May Allah use us to help you too. We are here. We love you. We may not know your struggles. We may not be able to help you the way you want to be helped. But I promise you, we have a feeling in our hearts. Here today, we are saying, Oh Allah, make life easy for all of those who are going through struggles. We may never know each other. But trust me, the feeling is inside. It could have been me. It could be anyone around me. Today, it might be you. Don't worry. The days that are coming will be better days. Stick in there. Keep on be bearing patience and see what Allah does for you.